So in the middle of uh, January, it has to be said, it's not a lot of fun taking photo or video of pretty much anything outside. But one thing you can do is take advantage of the low light and uh, use uh, additional ND filters if you've got them to do some long exposure photography. And uh, there's no better place to do that sort of thing than when you're um, near water. So today I'm just going to do some filming down near a uh, canal weir that's near me. It's got a lot of fast moving water and it should give you some pretty good effects if you have some uh, long shutter speeds. So as well as being useful for video to ensure you get the right shutter speed, ND filters can give you some pretty cool effects when you take still photography as well. But in order to do that, you do need a bit of extra equipment. Uh, first off, you're gonna to need to have a uh, tripod mount, which uh, unfortunately the Osmo Pocket doesn't come with a tripod mount built in, but uh, you can get uh, these sort of attachments that screw on quite cheap off eBay for about five pounds, five dollars. And uh, the crucial thing there is that it'll allow you to attach the Osmo Pocket to a tripod. The moment you start doing any photography that's over literally about a 30th of a second, uh, you need a tripod, otherwise you're going to get blur. So you can get some pretty cool effects at night time as well. You don't need such a strong ND filter because it's already dark. Uh, all the buildings stay focused, but uh, you get pretty cool effects from all the car lights as they uh, zoom past. So way too cold to go through all the uh, setup that I actually did for those long exposure shots. So um, I thought I'd uh, jump into the studio. Um, as I said, I was using a set of all day uh, ND filters and polarizers from uh, Freewell. Uh, today I'm primarily uh, concerned with actually maximizing the ND value to minimize the amount of light getting into, uh, into the lens. So quite literally, I want the very darkest ND filter I could get, which was a 64. And by putting that over the, uh, the lens, obviously that cuts the, uh, the light getting into the lens right down, which means you can actually really drag out the exposure time for your still photo, which is why I was going up to around uh, five, six seconds long. So unlike the uh, filters you have on your drones, these ones are magnetic and they literally just clip on. And uh, once they're on, they're not gonna fall off, but it does make uh, using them an absolute uh, breeze. One of the other things, as I said, uh, if you're gonna be doing long exposure photos, uh, I've really complained the fact there's no tripod mount at the uh, bottom of uh, the Osmo Pocket, but you can pick up uh, these little attachments. Uh, I've just got this for literally four pounds off uh, eBay, four dollars. And uh, all it does is slip on, nice and secure, it screws up, and then that gives you the all crucial uh, mounting uh, screw for a tripod. And uh, you're now in a position to start taking uh, long exposure photos uh, without any movement. Then depending on what your subject matter is, if you're gonna uh, take photos of water, then uh, pretty much any water you get is going to become uh, a silky sheen. And white water is gonna be far more interesting. You can see here, if you just take a picture of um, the, the general water, you just ends up looking like a gray slab. But where you've got a lot of white water churning around, then you get these lovely long silky effects. Another way you can take some uh, good photos with this is at night time, setting it up on a small tripod um, next to a road. And you can see the uh, bus lights and the car lights and cyclists uh, zooming past. And what you actually get are the buildings in perfect focus, but all the movement is blurred away. So in order to change the exposure settings on the Osmo Pocket, you need to go into the Pro settings. And after the last firmware update, you can now access those settings directly in the Osmo Pocket without having to have your phone attached and uh, accessing it via the Mimo app. All you do to uh, access Pro is to swipe down, keep scrolling left until you hit Pro, tap it, and then you go up. And now you've got the little yellow indicator top left that indicates you are in Pro mode. You can tap that top left corner and you can then uh, adjust the white balance. We want to adjust the exposure, so you just tap that and uh, take it out of auto, put it into manual. Now you can start scrolling that down and it becomes lighter and lighter as you increase the settings. 
So making those changes through the Mimo apps, obviously a lot easier, larger screen. Tap the little camera icon, lower left, and then once you're actually in those settings, uh, over on the right, make sure that you've tapped photo because they're the settings you want to change. And then you're going to tap that middle symbol on the left, and that's going to take you into the uh, actual camera settings itself. Take it off automatic. Take the ISO off auto and put it onto 100. And then you can adjust the shutter speed. Uh, take it right up to about three, four, even five seconds. Uh, and then finally, you want to go to the uh, self timer and put that onto three seconds so you don't get any camera shake. So I just wanted to go through a few extra things you can do with ND filters. It's not just about video. Uh, you can get some pretty great effects with uh, still photos as well. Um, anyway, uh, here I am with the Tower of London behind me. Until next time, have fun, happy flying. Cheers.